Plain Azalea. Now, many of you know Azalea. You might have them at your house. Really pretty flower. Pink, white. They sell them in little pots, you know, around Easter, Mother's Day. So those are all, most of those are all, you know, crosses and hybrids, varieties, uh, non-native, you know, azaleas all over the world. This is one of our native Appalachian azaleas, again, plain azalea. And it does, if you have a fact sheet, anybody got their sheet? It has beautiful uh, orange flower. And in fact, if you were to come out here like in May, you only get right there where the, those dogs are. There. And you look over here, and you would swear you there's two bushes on fire. Uh, that's why I've got the name Plain Azalea. Now, how, here's how I spot azaleas. And I don't think we've ever used a characteristic like this before for identifying. But I almost always, when I'm walking, gets my attention. Oh, there's an azalea. They tend to get twigs in whorls out at the end. And here's a really, really good example right here. It looks like an umbrella turned inside out, an umbrella flame. Now they're closely related to rhododendron. And they will have a very big flower bud, sort of like a rhododendron flower bud. If you got the leaves out of the way, it's much bigger here, but it's a much, much bigger, fatter flower bud. And then they have a very tiny little leaf bud. By the way, there's a nice little whorl of twig right there. Little, there they are. There's a flower bud and there's four little leaf buds. And that's the same thing for rhododendron. Really big flower buds, very, very tiny and conspicuous leaf buds. Then the flowers will form a fruit. Height-wise, uh, if you can see an azalea, and it's this large, even without knowing what color it's going to turn, it's a flame azalea. Because pink azalea tends to stay even almost below your waist. It's a much, much smaller one. There's another flame azalea with the leaves still pretty green on it back in there. Which, remember we talking about red and yellow in the sun? This one's out in the sun. It's got some red on its leaves. That one's back in there. It's got yellow. They only develop the red. They actually believe the red acts sort of as a sunscreen. It protects the leaf while it's getting all the chlorophyll and the nutrients out of it. Transport back for saving and the red pigments protected from getting photooxidized. Um, so when you don't need sunscreen, you don't put it on. <laughs> because it's not without a cost. That red pigment actually is a sugar compound. So it takes some energy to, to make it so they don't need it. So that's a cool example. Yellow, red, and white. They don't ever turn great fall colors.